Archaeology is a game of lost and found. Some of the greatest archaeological finds and sites have been those that were lost to time but then recovered through exploration. Lost cities like Machu Picchu and Pompeii have been rediscovered and gave hope to explorers that there still might be a possibility of finding the lost fabled cities of El Dorado and the lost city of Zed. But there's one lost city that has undoubtedly held the attention of humanity for millennia, the lost city of Atlantis. Hello friends, welcome back to Dig It with Raven. Today we're talking about a mystical place that many of you have asked me to make a video on and the one video that my cousin Andrew has been asking for for years. Andrew was the one who actually gave me the idea to start this YouTube channel, so we all have him to thank for the shenanigans that have ensued over the last three years. So needless to say, this video is dedicated to him and his little cherry blossom who is and will forever be my favorite nibbling. So did the lost city of Atlantis exist? Is there evidence of its material form here on Earth? Let's get into it. The story of Atlantis all starts with Plato. One of the OGs of philosophy, Plato had him some great thoughts, and people have claimed that all philosophical thought is now pretty much just a footnote to Plato's writings. He founded a school of thought and an academy that would be the first place of higher learning in the Western world. Plato was taught by Socrates and then went on to teach Aristotle, who taught Alexander the Great. No matter how you spin it, it all comes back to Plato. Honestly, there's so much that we have to thank Plato for, but... That's for another video. Plato wrote a bunch of works in his time, and he wrote one piece of dialogue called Critias, which discussed a lost island by the name of Atlantis. Plato begins this tale by traveling back in time to a mythical era in humanity that no longer exists. A silver age, as the Greek poet Hesiod would put it, where everything was larger than life and the gods were very much still present and regularly interacted with humanity. I imagine this time like every Disney movie rolled into one. The gods had divided the world up amongst themselves and built their temples for their worship. The god of the sea, Poseidon, was given the island of Atlantis, which is actually described as one main island with many little islands surrounding it. Poseidon then got busy populating the land by having children with a mortal woman, creating a civilization of demigods or godlike people, essentially. This island grew and grew, and it was the perfect place to live. Like, this place had everything. This place has everything. Precious metals galore, including the fabled metal auriculum that was probably an alloy of gold and copper, but was treated as something of mythical origin and was more precious than anything except gold. The plains were extremely fertile, they had elephants, and they had fountains of both hot and cold water. There were temples, there were palaces, and they wore these big, beautiful azure robes. By all meanings of the word, Atlantis was definitely a utopia. It was the utopia even before Thomas More wrote his book by the same name in 1516. Atlantis was wealthy beyond compare, but they didn't let it cloud their judgment or self-control, and for many generations, everything was perfect. People were pious towards the gods, they didn't take up war without just cause, and they didn't have any civil strife. Maybe it's the Disney version of Atlantis that's causing this imagery for me, but I imagine all of the Atlanteans as very young, vibrant people wearing blue and they all have white hair. Yeah, that's definitely Disney messing with my bias on this story, but whatever, it's a super underrated Disney movie and was so much fun that I will honor it in any way that I can. Anyways, all good things must come to an end, and even though these gentle, wise, virtuous people were godly in nature, after a few generations, their mortality got the better of them. And as Plato puts it, human nature got the upper hand. They then, being unable to bear their fortune, behaved unseemly, and to him who had an eye grew visibly debased, for they were losing the fairest of their precious gifts. Humans, am I right? Why do we always have to spoil the good thing? The Atlanteans had a bad case of hubris, a Greek term that means that they had too much pride and thought that they were better than the gods. And as we know, the gods are never very kind to people who think that they're better than them. Just look at the story of Bellerophon and how he tried to fly up Mount Olympus on Pegasus. 
That ended super badly. So Zeus saw that the Atlanteans had become every spoiled rich kid from my super sweet 16 and was pretty much just like, bye Felicia. Plato said that Atlantis was struck by an earthquake and became an impassable barrier of mud to voyagers to any part of the ocean. And just like that, it was gone. Now with Plato's story, there are two main ways that you can go with it. One, you can take it as an allegory for life. Life just isn't so magical as it may have been in the mystical past when the gods interacted with us, and Atlantis can be seen as a scapegoat as to why things are just much less magical and perfect nowadays. As humans, we have to remember that too much pride will lead to our downfall and that leading a just and moral existence is the way to go. And we also have to remember that it's probably not the best idea to think you're better than the gods. Or anyone else for that matter. Be kind, friends. Atlantis is probably more so some sort of moral propaganda to really hype up Athens, who had just come out of their golden age but was still a city of democracy and politics and philosophy. Atlanteans were an embodiment of those who let their wealth, advancement, and power corrupt them. So that was option number one. Or you could go with door number two and think that Atlantis was an actual physical place and we must find it at all costs. Yeah, that's the door that most people go through. The story of Atlantis keeps coming up in archaeology and pseudoscience. Everyone is super fascinated with the idea of a lost underwater city, and I can't blame them because so am I. Underwater archaeology is so freaking cool, and there are tons of underwater finds around the Mediterranean that just fuel our imagination. For example, the sunken harbor of Alexandria, or the ancient city of Thera on modern-day Santorini. But Atlantis wasn't actually a popular Greek myth until the late 1800s, when an American by the name of Ignatius L. Donnelly wrote a book called The Antediluvian World in 1882, saying that he believed that there was an ancient civilization that was technologically and morally superior to everyone else. Donnelly believed that Plato's Atlantis was this amazing civilization that spawned other civilizations, and that all advances in humanity could be traced back to this lost island. Donnelly also added a lot more facts that have become part of the Atlantis myth. For example, he said that Egypt was a colony of Atlantis. He also said that the gods and goddesses of the ancient Greeks, Phoenicians, Hindus, and Scandinavians were in fact kings, queens, and heroes of Atlantis, and that all of their feats were true historical events, and that under the oceans somewhere lies a sunken island with an incalculable amount of treasure. I could go on, friends, but the moral of the story here is that not one of his claims had any evidence. After Donnelly's book, even more people began writing about it, and the Atlantis myth grew and grew into what we have today. Explorers and those who are impassioned with finding this lost city have scoured the globe in hopes of being the one to discover it. There are countless theories and locations as to where Atlantis might be, and here is a list of my favorite suggestions. Number one, somewhere off the coast of the Bahamas. That's a big one, and now there's even an Atlantis hotel there to cash in on that craze. In the 1970s, a writer named Charles Berlitz believed that the Bermuda Triangle just swallowed Atlantis up. And off the coast of one of the islands in the Bahamas, there's this geological formation called the Bimini Road. It's a bunch of large rocks that do resemble something like man-made building stones, but alas, they are purely natural formations. Secondly, there's the theory that Atlantis was part of Antarctica and that the island split from the continent about 12,000 years ago. Of course, now this theory has been widely debunked because now we know about plate tectonics and how continents actually move. We also know a lot about how islands are made, and there being a missing island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, well, that just can't happen because even a submerged landmass is visible with our current technology. There's another theory that Plato might have been talking about the Minoan civilization, which did go from riches to rags in a very relatively short period of time. The Minoans had their base on the island of Crete and had a great influence on the ancient Greek culture that would rise to power after them. It was said that earthquakes and a volcanic eruption at the island of Santorini destroyed their naval fleet, which may have brought them into an era of decline. Plato could have taken the legend of the Minoans and, being the great writer that he is, dressed it up a little to prove his point. We know the Minoan palace at Knossos has been thought of to be the origin for the story of the Minotaur, so what's stopping Plato from doing the same thing? Other suggestions of Atlantis have been in the Black Sea, 
Turkey, Bolivia, Germany for some reason, Ireland, the Portuguese island of Madeira. You can see where this is going. The funny thing is, Plato already gave us the location of Atlantis. He wrote, For the ocean there was at that time navigable, for in front of the mouth, which you Greeks call, as you say, the pillars of Heracles, or Hercules, there lay an island which was larger than Libya and Asia together. Plato was saying that there was this giant landmass that was in the Atlantic Ocean beyond the pillars of Hercules, which we know are the Straits of Gibraltar. For a landmass that was bigger than Libya and Asia combined, and keep in mind that he didn't mean all of Asia, they didn't really have contact that far east yet, you'd think a landmass of that size would be pretty hard to miss on any ocean mapping project or satellite imagery. Now, I know a lot of people are probably going to say in the comments that mainstream archaeologists are just hiding the truth and that it's all a conspiracy to fool the sheeple, but I'm sorry to disappoint. There is no conspiracy and we are not being paid to keep secrets from the public. Believe me, I wish I was being paid to hide secrets. It would make my life so much more financially stable. Of course, the story of Atlantis and the spark it has to the imagination of the public will probably never die. And thanks to Ignatius Donnelly, we've got ourselves a 160 year old fable to keep us awake at night with a dream of the unexplored. If there's anything to take from the story of Atlantis, it's that sometimes it's fun to dream up the quote, what could be in order to keep us pushing forward with science and discovery. But we must always remember to keep our hubris in check. And if you're really set on finding Atlantis yourself, all you have to do is open up some Play-Doh. That, my friends, is the story of Atlantis. I apologize if I disappointed anyone with flat out saying that it's an impossible dream, especially to my cousin Andrew, whose dream it is to find it one day. But sorry, cuz, you did it to yourself by inspiring me to start this channel in the first place. If you liked that video, go ahead and smash that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any other videos that I'll be putting out. And if you like this video and you wanna support what I do because I'm definitely not being paid to keep any conspiracies quiet, go ahead and become a patron over on Patreon. The link is just in my description down below. You will get early access to all of my videos and you might even get your name on the screen right here as a supporter. Here are all of my socials and as always, stay dirty my friends.